Dear colleagues, today is an important day in the life of our IT family and for the state of information and communication technology, PP18, the 20th Plenary Potential Conference of ITU. It's an opportunity to take stock of our journey and chart our next steps. Earlier this morning in Japan, the United Arab Emirates launched its ninth Khalifa set into orbit. So let me once more again take this opportunity to congratulate the UAE Space Agency, the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center, and the UAE TIA on this successful satellite launch. As I mentioned this morning, it's really make uh, our day today double happiness. The world of technology is changing very rapidly, and ITU is changing with it. In 2015, we are together to celebrate ITU's 150th anniversary, over 150 years of ICT technologies and services in the service of human development. Today, I'm very pleased to share with you that we have uh, many new sector members who joined us over the last uh, four years. We welcome new private sector members that reflect the changing nature of our digital economy. Google, Alibaba, Facebook, Tencent, Netflix, but also Sigfox, China Tower, Yongdae, and many others. ITU has also welcomed new members of Academy. I'd like to share another good news with you that we are working with uh, one state, Palo, which is a member of uh, United Nations, but not yet member of ITU. So I met with the President Palo September in New York, and he promised me that uh, he will speed up his application process so that uh, we are very confident, very soon, ITU will become a family of 194 members. What that brings all these members to ITU? It is what brings us all together here today, namely how to provide better ICT services to the people and to deliver on the promise of the fourth industrial revolutions. Over the last four years, ITU has been at the forefront of this revolution. We have been working on issues ranging from artificial intelligence, smart cities, digital currency, to the Internet of Things, new televisions, and 5G standards and we have facilitated ICT infrastructure development. One place to start is with radio communications. The World Radio Communication Conference 2015 successfully responded to the increasing demand for the use of radio spectrum and orbit resources. WRC 19. We will further address these demands by considering new allocations and identification for IMT, high attitude platforms, and non geostationary satellite systems. Consensus is being built in its preparation to make it a new success for our union. Innovation 
and standardization are part of the fabric of ITU. The Radio Communication Assembly 2015 and the World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly 2016 set the agenda for the vital standards work over the coming years. Yet, all these new technologies put the regulatory paradigms to the test, as the regulators everywhere are trying to keep up with the faster pace of the industry. On the development side, the World Telecommunication Development Conference 2017 strengthened the connection between technology and development, reaffirming the central role of ITU in leveraging ICT for the standard sustainable development goals. In this context, events like the Global Symposium for Regulators and tools like the Measuring the Information Society and the ICT Development Index help policymakers, industry leaders, and ICT stakeholders worldwide promote growth and development while coping with the new regulatory frontiers and the new skills, development, and innovation. Other events, like uh, International Girls in ICT Day, ITU Telecom World events, and the AI for Good Global Summit have helped foster an open environment for partnership in critical as areas such as gender, small and medium-sized enterprises, and artificial intelligence. From the WISIS Forum to World Telecommunication and Information Society Day, all major annual ITU events since our last plenary potential conferences, conference has, have helped advance the objectives and the strategic goals of the Union. Growth, inclusiveness, sustainability, innovation, and partnership. More and more, ITU is affirming its role as a key partner in development. We collaborate with sister UN agencies and others on important common projects, leveraging the power of ICT to accelerate progress towards the SDGs. I'm very pleased to have uh, my brother, Hossein, Director General of uh, UPU, uh, present to our Plain Potential Conference. And he's here with us today and the next few days. In this effort, ITU has tackled issues ranging from digital literacy, to health, to financial inclusion. We can be proud of what we are doing with organizations like the Broadband Commission to promote the infrastructure development, IAO, to train tomorrow's workforce and UN women to bridge the digital gender divide with initiatives such as EQUAS. ITU's efforts have gained more international recognition. ITU is grateful to have participated in the first ICT ministerial meetings of BRICS in 2015, the first one of G7 in 2016, and the first one in G20 in 2017. I'm very pleased to note that all these groups will continue their ICT ministerial annual meetings in the future. We will continue to deepen our cooperation with all our partners. Dear delegates, as Secretary General, transparency, openness, and efficiency have been high on my agenda and high on my priority list 
And that includes ensuring the most effective use of ITU's limited resources, including human resources, financial resources. Across the organization, we are modernizing how we work to better serve the need of our members. Management is making every effort to improve staff engagement and uh, performance through the introduction of modern processes and uh, policies. Efforts are being made to streamline the digitized internal processes. I want to take a moment to acknowledge our members' steadfast commitment to the union. Thank you for your continued trust and support. Thank you to the countries that have increased their class of contributory units and to those who have hosted and contributed sponsorship to ITU events and meetings. Thank you all for your decision and give ITU a new headquarters building, a new home, and a new image that will embody ITU's identity and our commitment to connecting people. I would like to thank Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates for their sponsorship to the new building, the Czech Republic for its donation for the new building, and encourage others to join them. I wish to congratulate my fellow elected officials on their outstanding team spirit and ITU staff on their hard work and dedication to the mission of the union. I want to express my thanks on behalf of ITU to all those who took part in the regional preparatory meetings leading up to this day and to the United Arab Emirates to hosting ITU's highest level meeting. Finally, it is important to pay tribute to the delegates who have left us in the last few years. I think that we have some name here. So it's very painful to note those names. Someone died very young, like uh, Mr. Manu Barwes from U.S. Secretary uh, uh, State Department. And we have some very famous professors, like Professor Mark Krivashev from Russia Federation, who had worked in ITU for many, many years, more than 60 years long. And he even showed up earlier this year to us. But unfortunately, he died in the middle of October at the age of 96. And I was informed uh, Mr. Molina Negro of Spain just died a few days ago. And he was uh, very distinct figures, individuals, during our early history, in particular 1970s, 1980s. So I would uh, very much like to invite you to remember our past delegates. If I may, I could invite you to stand up for one minute of silence for all these uh, colleagues passed away. Thank you very much. Of course, the list is not exhausted. You know, that, uh, we just uh, collect uh, those uh, names uh, through different uh, channels and got to them, and so we listed it here. So ladies and gentlemen, we are at a crossroads as we approach the 50, 50 milestone moment for internet connectability. 50 connected, 50 unfortunately not connected yet. Far too many people around the world are still waiting to reap the benefit of the digital economy. 
most targets of our Connected 2020 agenda are on track to be achieved. Now is the time to redouble our efforts. Now is the time to turn today's digital revolution into a development revolution. Let us continue our efforts to leverage the power of ICT to advance ITU's strategic plan. With its action lines, Connect 2020 and the SDGs. And let us ensure that the activities of our union continue to serve the people you represent, the mission we share, and the values we defend. To this end, I urge you to focus our efforts on four I's. Infrastructure, investment, innovation, and inclusiveness. Four I's. Let me repeat. Infrastructure, investment, innovation, and inclusiveness. Four areas where we can have the most impact. I'm calling on you to work together over the next uh, three weeks and beyond to upgrade existing ICT infrastructure and to extend it to reach those in poorly connected and unconnected areas. Encouraging more investment from the public and the private sectors and to create good environment to attract investments and to support the technology and the business innovation so that the digital revolution leaves no one behind. Ladies and gentlemen, PP18, we have set the course of our union for the next four years. With the adoption of the ITU strategic and the financial plans, many important topics have been submitted for discussion, and we should arrive at decisions by the conference's end. We have a heavy agenda and many tasks ahead of us. I would highly appreciate if this conference could guide ITU in strengthening its work on SMEs. Similarly, I'm calling on you to help us reinforce the message that if ITU is a technical agency responsible for ICT services and technologies. It is also a development agency committed to reaching all those who are not connected yet. I thank you for your attention and wish you great success in your endeavors at PP18. Thank you.